Okay, let's talk about the MEGA Middle School Math Assessment. And if you're watching this video, I assume that you are preparing for this uh, particular assessment, which of course, as you know, is for those of you who want to teach middle school math in the great state of Missouri. So what we're going to do here is take a look at a practice problem that you should be able to confidently uh, solve uh, if you expect to do well on the MEGA middle school math assessment. There is a considerable amount of mathematics that you need to know uh, for this particular assessment. But before we get into that, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math, and I'm a middle and high school math teacher myself. And uh, been developing online courses for well over a decade, uh, many, many years, and uh, do a lot in online education. I actually have complete a uh, complete test prep course for the MEGA Middle School Math Assessment. Extremely comprehensive. Um, that I think uh, uh, you would really like. But uh, if you're interested in checking that out, I'm going to leave the link to that course in the description of this video. But with uh, that being said, let's go ahead and see if you can uh, solve this problem. So, of course, I'm going to solve this problem, and we'll talk a little bit about it, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to um, solve it yourself. So, And I don't want to give you too many clues yet because I want to give you, again, an opportunity to figure this out. So we're looking at some sort of expression and I'd like you to simplify this expression so I will say that the way this expression is written is not kind of uh, in a proper mathematical form so I'd like you to simplify this expression so if you're like okay I get this guy's drift if you kinda understand what I'm saying go ahead and pause the video and do that and if you're not quite sure I'm gonna go ahead and continue on now uh, with the solution alright so what are we talking about well we're talking about some sort of rational expression. Now remember that word rational in mathematics uh, really indicates, or you kind of think of it as uh, fractional, right? Like a fraction, two thirds. So two thirds is a rational number. The definition of a rational number is more or less kind of a quick definition. And the real number set is any number that we can write as a fraction that is uh, where the numerator and uh, uh, denominator are formed by integers. That's kind of rough um, description of what, or definition of a rational number. And then we have rational expressions, which are basically fractional type of expression. So that word rational, again, we're talking about a fraction, but there is something in particular, I'm gonna use this, a uh, kind of a, a simpler form of this problem. Let's take a look at this problem. Two, divided by the square root of three. So what's going on with this particular problem where we're not really, this is not really um, okay to leave this way? Well, what we have is we have, this wouldn't, this is not a rational number, okay? This is a, a fraction. So we have a, a whole number up here, an integer, but it's being divided by a uh, an irrational number, okay? So in mathematics, you're, when we have a number in the numerator, okay, that's fine. Any kind of number could be okay, but we can't divide by an irrational number, okay? If you think about it, let's just, now, well, first of all, let's just back up. Let's talk real quick about what an irrational number is, right? So a rational number, okay, just kind of think about it. Hey, that's rational. It's logical. <laughs> it's understandable, right? A rational number are numbers that we can find uh, that have a rational I'm sorry, a fractional equivalent to them, okay? So as decimals, these are terminating decimals. They stop, okay, or they're uh, repeating, right? So I don't want to go too, too far off on a, on a tangent here, but it's important to talk about this for a second so we really understand what, what we have to do with this particular problem. So uh, in mathematics, an irrational number is a number that we cannot uh, that does not have a um, fractional equivalent. Well, fam the most famous one would be like, let's say, pi, right? So pi, we try to say, well, that's close to the fraction 22 sevenths, but that's it's not exactly 22 sevenths, it's approximately 22 sevenths. That's why we have all these crazy contests with pi's, like, hey, how many digits of pi can you remember? 3.1415, da, 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 whatever. And because people memorize these digits of pi because they're, non-repeating and non-terminating, okay? So this is an irrational number. It would be great if we had 
a specific fraction uh, equivalent. Now we use estimated uh, estimations like 22 sevens is pretty close, but it's not an exact uh, representation of that number. That's why we use this variable pi. So hey, let's let's kind of use this word pi here for a second. So if I have a pizza pie and I say uh, let's divide this into four pieces, well that's a rational concept, right? You got four nice little pieces, but if I say divide this pizza into pi pieces, well, that's close to 3.14, or maybe something like this, right? But how do you divide something by an irrational number? We can never really kind of figure out, well, exactly how to divide, you know, divide this. Conceptually, it doesn't make sense, right? Like, well, it's irrational. We don't know the exact value. So how can you divide something when when you're, you're you don't really know that exact value it does it just keeps going so in mathematics we don't like to write things this way all right so we don't want to leave irrational numbers in the denominator so hopefully this was kind of a you know a, a fair explanation of why that is so now let's go back to this simple little problem here now again for middle school math if you haven't taken a look what's on this particular exam, again, there's a you know you're going to need to know a lot of high school level and advanced high school level mathematics for sure. And this is real kind of basic algebra one stuff here. So how do I address this? Okay, well we do something called rationalizing, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both the num. Oops, well I kind of did double little square root there. I want to multiply both the numerator and denominator by the square root of three. Now. If you look at this here, a square root of 3 divided by a square root of 3, or anything divided by anything, let me do it over here, square root of 3 divided by a square root of 3, anything divided by itself is just 1, okay? So really what I'm doing here is taking 2 thirds and multiplying it by a fancy looking 1. So I'm not changing the uh, the, the problem, it's more like an identity, right? Mul multiplicative identity. However, what I am doing is, um, when I, when I do this, is I get rid of that irrational number in the denominator. So the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3 and then 2 times the square root of 3 is 2 thirds. Okay, and now I got myself an equivalent uh, expression but I no longer have that irrational number in, um, in the denominator. Okay, so these are the things that uh, you know, you, you, this is what we call rationalizing, right? Well we're going to have to rationalize this particular uh, problem here that I'm, I'm taking a look at, right? Because we do have a, an irrational number in the denominator. So how do I rationalize this expression? Okay, so it's pretty much like what I did there, but of course we have this little one hanging out, so it's going to require something different. So let me go ahead and solve this now. If you think you know how to do it, and you're like, oh, okay, and go ahead and pause in the video and follow through because I'm going to go ahead and solve this uh, right now and then we'll wrap up this video. Okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use something called the conjugate. So this is like a binomial. This is something like, you kind of think of this as the form like 2 over a minus b. Okay so think of this as a binomial and we're gonna multiply it by the conjugate. So the conjugate we're gonna use the opposite signs. So if it's a minus b it's gonna be a plus b. In this case, it's going to be the square root of 3 plus 1. So the square root of 3 plus 1 is the conjugate of square root of 3 minus 1. So that's something you definitely need to know. But again, if I want to multiply this whole this expression by something, I need to uh, have both the numerator and denominator here. So here's just something divided by itself. It's just 1. So I'm not going to change the expression, Okay, what's going on. Uh, let me go ahead and scoot this over down here, give us some room to work. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's deal with the numerator first. So this will be 2 times, let me write this this way, 2 times the square root of 3 plus 1, and we'll clean this up here in a second. Now, let's take a look at the denominator. Okay, the denominator, we're going to have to use the FOIL methods. Let me write it down here. All right now, if you're kind of like lost, then that's definitely an indication that you need to do some serious review. If you kind of remember this, then that's that's good as well. But 
this is stuff that you need to be like absolutely on top of for this particular you know test that and like this and a, and a lot lot more okay so let's go ahead and continue to uh, um, with this prompt so if we're gonna use the foil method just as if we're doing like x plus y times 3x minus 4y if I told you to multiply those two binomials you'd use the foil method right first outer inner last so same thing here so square root of 3 times square root of 3 is going to be just 3. So let's write that right here. Uh, we'll write it here as well. Okay. So that's first. Okay. Outer would be, these are our outers right here. First, outer. So square root of 3 times 1 is just square root of 3. All right. Inner. Okay. First, outer, inner. Right. So now it's negative 1 times the square root of 3. So that's uh, minus square root of 3. Of course, these are going to cross cancel and this is fine and then the last is going to be negative 1 times 1 and that's minus 1 so when I clean this up this is going to be 3 these two uh, um, radicals here cancel each other out so it's 3 minus 1 okay so that would be this is a racist here uh, just so we can write the final answer 3 minus 1 of course is 2 so this is what we have all right but we're not quite well we actually can be done at this point because I can distribute this 2 in here but that's not going to do me any good because I can just factor that 2 right out and now I could cross cancel those 2's and I'm left with my final answer is square root of 3 plus 1. Now there's another approach here that I could have um, um, used down here in the denominator if you think of this remember as a minus b times a plus b Hopefully, you remember this is the difference of two squares, right? If you're factoring uh, recollection, so that's a squared minus b squared. So this is another way this is kind of taught. It's We're basically doing the same thing. We're just multiplying two binomials that are in this particular form. So you could have used this form as well or just foiled, but either way, you need to know how to multiply this times this and then obviously do the distributive property and factor and simplify and this is our final answer so yes I'm kind of you know um, going kind of uh, somewhat fast because I don't want to turn this into a complete full lessons on how to multiply radicals and factoring and all this on it that's a, that's a lot of material that's why I cover all of this and much much more in my um, test prep course for the MEGA middle school math assessment. Just remember, you know, if you're teaching middle school math, I mean, you could be teaching, well, you well, are going to be teaching, okay, sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade math. Well, in the eighth grade, you could very well be teaching algebra one um, and all, uh, maybe even high school level geometry. Okay, a lot of middle schools, you're, you know, your more advanced students are here. You're definitely teaching pre-algebra here. So at the middle school level, you're already you know, in a position where you'll be teaching high school level math. Uh, and take it from me, if you haven't taught high school level math, you know, you need to have a mastery of a lot of material. Myself, I have a degree in mathematics, not math education. I have an actual degree in mathematics and a master's degree, and you got to know a lot of math to really teach this stuff well. So at the middle school level, you really have to have a, a command of, of high school level uh, mathematics for sure. Okay, it's not just the basic stuff like fractions and, you know, pre-algebra. You know, yes, that might be the focus, the majority of the things they're going to be teaching. But to, to, to teach anything, you really need to know more than what you're teaching. Okay, that's why you are the teacher. So just, again, don't get, you know, if you haven't seen what's on this particular test, I would definitely have, you know, suggest that you go check out and see what's what's on there. It's a considerable amount of material or mathematics. Uh, but anyways that's that's what you have to do if you want to you know be a teacher or especially a math teacher um, you gotta know your stuff so uh, with that being said let's go and wrap up this video um, again if you want to check out my test prep course on MEGA middle school math assessment I'll leave that link in the description of this video I've been on YouTube for like well over 12 years um, have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel uh, millions of views I'm, I'm pleased to say and hundreds uh, over well over 100,000 subscribers so you know you don't get those kind of numbers without really being passionate about teaching math because <laughs> you gotta like you know teach 
put videos out there and that's what I love to do so I've been doing it for years and years and years so if you like my teaching style I uh, want to check out a lot more of my uh, videos I have tons of various little math little tutorials and etc on my channel um, they're broken up in various kind of playlists so you might want to check that out or maybe you want to check out my full test prep course hey if you like this video definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback what's your background um, are you coming from a different career you know um, a lot of people go into teaching from maybe uh, doing something else and they, they decide hey I want to become a teacher or maybe you you know um, you know you're just always knew that you wanted to be a teacher and I'd love to hear you know why middle school math I know for myself I started in high school uh, mathematics which was which was you know awesome but then I kind of wanted to see what it was like to teach middle school and I ended up in middle school both are great but there's a huge difference teaching us you know a sixth grader uh, you know teaching real basic stuff to somebody who's in 12th grade taking the AP type course a complete spectrum here and what's kind of crazy is um, you could just kind of see the differences between, you know, sixth graders, seventh graders. There's big differences in the in ninth graders and eleventh graders. We we oftentimes don't remember, you know, back in our own personal school days. But as a teacher, there are these really distinct differences on how to teach. Um, uh, and you know, it's a it's a great career. It's a challenging career. The test, the education, what's required to become a teacher is challenging. So. Don't look for the easy way out when it, you know, like, oh, you want to do the minimum. I mean, if you're going to be a teacher, you know, uh, my best suggestion is, you know, put yourself in a full immersive state, master it because then everything else is going to go um, better for you. But, of course, I don't, I don't have to tell you that because you wouldn't be at this level anyways without being a hard worker. But hopefully, uh, you know, this little video helped you out and gave you some ideas on how to get uh, ready for this particular assessment. With that being said, I definitely want to wish you all the best. Thank you for your time and have a great day.